Hello, my name is Jitka Všetečková and I'm Senior Lecturer in Health and Social Care in Faculty of Wellbeing, Education and Language Studies at the Open University. In a series of online and face-to-face -face talks known as the Aging While Public Talks, we have been exploring how important it is over our lifespan to maintain a well-balanced nutrition, hydration, as well as regular physical, social activity in the older age. The principles discussed during this series of talks are known as the five pillars of Aging Well. As part of the Aging Well series, we made also five short films, one for every one of the five pillars that are available to watch and download via YouTube and Open Learn channels. In these short films, we are exploring how using the knowledge around five pillars of aging well might facilitate self-management and delay the aging processes for as long as we can. The coronavirus pandemic necessitates that we take several measures to protect ourselves and others in our communities. The latest evidence says that our communities and individuals in them will suffer less if measures of social distancing and self-isolation are introduced. Following the advice by the World Health Organization, several governments, including the UK government, have now introduced or will soon be introducing measures which are designed to delay the transmission of the coronavirus. No matter how effective these measures can be in delaying the spread of the virus, some people, especially older and vulnerable people, may find it hard to cope with being home alone for a long period of time. So what are the risks of self-isolation for older people? As we know, older people have a higher risk of muscle atrophy due to also lack of physical activity and other age-related changes. Self-isolation may lead to increased sedation, further lack of physical, social and cognitive activity, which may also prompt and or speed up the age-related decline. This will be a challenging time for all and we may feel that staying home may restrict our lives, which is true. However, we must not forget that most people of those who will have the virus will recover. It is very important, therefore, that during the time of self-isolation, we take care of ourselves so that we increase our chances of full and speedy recovery. As we know, we start aging the moment we're born. It demonstrates more significantly, though when we reach a certain age, the usual benchmark being 65 years of age, but at around this age, age-related changes manifest rather quickly. In the previous five short films, we briefly discussed changes brought about by aging, such as changes in metabolic rate, liver and kidney function, neural and muscle function, and overall mobility, physical and mental well-being. In this short film, we discuss how we can apply the principles of the five pillars of aging well in supporting ourselves if we need to self-isolate and spend a lot of time at home. To remind ourselves, the five pillars of aging well are nutrition, hydration, physical, social and cognitive stimulation. In terms of nutrition, we need to be mindful of keeping regular food intake and make sure that we try to keep all the necessary nutrients, carbohydrates, proteins and fats in our diet. It is possible that there will be some shortages to temporary stock in local shops, which means that we may need to be inventive and replace a source of nutrient with another. For example, if we can't temporarily find pasta, we may need to resort to rice and noodles. If you can eat nuts, make sure you have some every day. They are an excellent source of protein as well as fat. Bananas are another excellent and filling source of nutrients. We're all aware that fats and carbohydrates are necessary, but please do remember that proteins are very important for our good muscle function and they are very important to keep in our daily food intake, especially when we get older. In times that we may exercise less, we may need to reasonably increase our intake of fiber as well, just in fruits and vegetables, to maintain good bowel functions. 
Certain cereals may be a good source of several nutrients, vitamins and amino acids, as well as fiber, if there are shortages of fruits and vegetables temporarily in the market, although this is not expected. The golden advice is to keep your weight under control as well and support your body with all nutrient groups to keep it strong to fight any infection. There is plenty of very useful advice regarding nutrition on the NHS and other websites which you can access through links in the article accompanying this video on OpenLearn. In terms of hydration, it is immensely important to keep hydrated as good hydration keeps our metabolic rate at optimal level. This has substantial benefits to all body and brain functions. Good hydration is also especially important for our kidneys and liver, which in addition to very many other functions, they also deal with clearing up any medication we might be taking. The strict minimum clear fluids intake is 1.5 liter per day, but the closer you can get to two liters per day, which is around eight cups or three and a half pints, the better. In the films of Five Pillars of Aging Well, we have discussed more in detail how important nutrition and hydration is to both physical and mental health and well-being. To keep our good health while we're getting older, we need to keep the blood regularly circulating. Good hydration, drinking plenty and regular physical activity are very important in that respect. Physical activity does not always mean running, swimming or going to the gym. Being physically active means that we take every opportunity to exercise, keep in motion at optimal level and as regularly as we possibly can. You may wish to check with your healthcare provider about what the optimal level is for you if you have a chronic condition, but it is recommended by the World Health Organization that we keep active for 30 minutes, five times a week. I would make a plea, make it every day if you can. Keeping physically active will have a protective effect on our muscles, joints, tendons and consequently bones. So what can we do then when we self-isolate? There are a few choices. We can spend time gardening, tidying up the garage or the loft. If we live in an apartment, we can do the house chores for a few minutes every day. Those with a smartphone can now download one of several free apps for exercise at home or watch Tai Chi videos on YouTube, for example. Stretching and walking inside our home can be as good as walking and stretching outdoors. The main aim is to keep the heart working, the muscles active and the metabolism at an optimal level. Our cognitive functions are very important too and we need to help our brain to keep its plasticity and capacity for as long as we're able to. The brain, like the muscles, works better when regularly stimulated. Stimulation can be of various sorts, observing the surroundings, people, places, nature, interacting with people and engaging with the world we live in. This might be challenging when we self-isolate and live on our own. Apart from passive modes of communication, watching TV, listening to the radio, reading magazines, books or doing crosswords, we may need to mobilize our networks from distance and not being too reserved to pick up the phone and give a ring to friends and relatives. This is perhaps a good time to learn a new language, which has been reported by research, by the way, as immensely stimulating. Also playing or learning to play the piano or another musical instrument was recommended. It is possible we can use a computer to connect with others. Please just remember to make regular breaks to stand up, stretch, walk a little in your home or go out for a walk where and when this is possible and recommended. Regularity in our approach to all activities was always recommended by research as being very important. It might be crucial these days to create a routine following our own rhythm that takes us from the morning to the evening making sure that we have planned our day in a way that it incorporates elements of the five pillars of aging well. Nutrition, hydration, physical, social and cognitive stimulation. Keeping these in as much as we're able to will support us with keeping well, aging well even when we need to have reduced social contact, 
self-isolate or if it is needed in a lockdown situation. Please remember that most young and older people will not become seriously ill because of the coronavirus. Of those people who will become ill, the ones who eat a balanced diet, drink plenty of clear fluids, exercise regularly and keep stimulated will recover faster and more fully. Thank you for watching. Get more from the Open University. Check out the links on screen now.